Hey there, fellow creators. Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and welcome back to the Space Objects tutorial series. This will be the final video in this set, at least the main final video in the set, and it's probably going to be the most complicated and advanced level of tutorial that I've done in this series so far. We're going to be painting space rings uh, and, and asteroid belts from the perspective of being in that asteroid belt. Stick around. Okay, so the first about eight minutes of this tutorial, I completely forgot to turn my mic back on when I was recording. So for the first part of this, you're going to get some narration. So this particular little painting here, uh, if, what you guys saw from, from the previous tutorial on the planets, I did a quick time lapse of the process of painting this particular Jupiter-Saturn-esque world. And uh, since then, <coughs> I also added uh, that little bit of a black shadow. So uh, black and white and uh, such. Uh, for our colors, uh, this time around, I'm going to be using some Prussian blue hue. Um, you don't necessarily need that blue in particular. I just like to tone it down a little bit. <clears throat> it's going to need some zinc white. This is going to be for our mist layer, uh, which is, we're going to be doing fairly somewhere in towards the beginning of this. Uh, this, as I said in the intro, this com uh, this tutorial is a little bit more complicated. So a few more colors, a few more uh, different techniques. Now this particular painting is essentially a scaled down version of a painting that I did back in 2020 called the um, uh, Escape Vector. Uh, so for this, it's going to be essentially creating roughly that same piece again. Brush-wise, we're looking at uh, small flats and, and, and brights. Uh, the brush I have in my hand currently is called a shader. It's just a short-handled uh, flat. Uh, flats, of course, being a lot... Uh, Longer bristles out of the ferrule. This one's a little bit uh, shorter. Going to be using probably both of those throughout the course of this, and that's probably it. I might grab my liner a little later, but that's just about it. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be using some of my used paint as my base gray color. Uh, a couple of, I believe it was the the Planetary Craters video, the second tutorial in this series, I mixed that color up uh, just with my primaries. But this, I'm just going to go ahead and use the stuff that I already have pre-mixed. Uh, this is just a convenience for me. I already have it. Uh, and then we're going to just mix between the, the white, the black, and the blue uh, to do all of the, the different color shades and gradients with that as well. And, and little variations in that color. So I'm using that as a base. If you want to learn how to make that, again, that's back in the uh, uh, part two when we talked about... Uh, I, at least I think it was part two. My, it, it's, it's in one of the other parts. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But it, but, but I, I explained how to mix a color, that this sort of that brown brownish gray color. Uh, in one of the previous other ones. <clears throat> now for this, I've also grabbed some actual rocks from my backyard uh, because I wanted to get some actual references here, physical references that I can look at shapes, I can look at the overall lighting and, and how light hits, things like that. And, and like, like, what do I want these asteroids to kind of look like? Um, so the planetary rings are basically bits of dust and ice and rock. Uh, floating in space around a planet gravitationally, so I wanted to get something that uh, I could really base those shapes on, so just having a couple of them off to the side is going to be really valuable. <clears throat> now setting my palette and uh, canvas up together, you can see a mixture of <clears throat> some black and some, I think, glazing liquid there that I did the uh, shadow of the planet with. Again, using that uh, smaller rigger uh, uh, brush. Um, uh, little, it's not stiff bristles, but tight ones, um, to keep things, uh, relatively, you know, soft and in there. Now I'm here, I'm talking about trying to create sort of a center line. I, I know I want to create, um, and, and put those rocks above and below that line a little bit, but not so far above it, um, that it looks out of place. So the st first one, we're just loading that brush up and I'm just kind of dot in a couple of smaller, uh, rocks right around that center line area. So it's, a, it's an imaginary line in my head right now. Uh, it will show up more more so on the second layer, but for the first layer, I want to just dr drop in a couple of those smaller shapes. So mostly using the corner of the brush here, uh, just keeping the brush up on its side, and just giving myself a general indication of where I want those shapes. <coughs> And it's really important to do this 
first rock layer, and you don't necessarily want to make just make a straight line with them, but you know, throw in some variations, a little higher, a little lower. Um, and the second layer here is going to be a, a sort of a, a thin, uh, tr transparent, translucent uh, color layer on top of this, but it's important to create that depth of field by putting this layer in uh, with the rocks first. <coughs> And then just for the sake of, you know, depth of field and everything else, I'm not just keeping them on that line. I put a couple, again, a couple little lower, a couple little higher, a uh, little bit bigger, uh, closer to the, uh, closer to the, to, to the, uh, the viewer, but uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, you know, just keep it, keep it on that line and keep things uh, roughly in that level of perspective. <coughs> And some of them could be not just further away, just smaller rocks in that um, in that viewpoint. So it you know it's not just the ones that are way out in the distance, but there's some close ones too, but they're just smaller. It's 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 all playing with that force perspective, really. <coughs> now going into my black, and I'm mixing some of that Prussian blue with it as well. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and even with the paint's a little bit wet right now, I can add a little bit of shadow to them. And again, thinking about my light source coming down from the left, uh, and sort of le le uh, left and upper left, really coming in at that angle, especially with the way I did the planet, uh, that will give me an idea of where to shadow those rocks. So mostly on the lower right side, flip the canvas here, just to make it a little easier on me so I can rest my hand on the edge. And I'm just giving it a couple of little indications of some shadows. Now, I'm not being so specific to details at this point. Again, this is the layer in the back. We're going to be covering some of this up. Uh, so it's not a, a huge deal if, if you're not really worrying, uh, uh, specifically being like, oh, I have to detail every little thing. In fact, you know what? Don't. Because uh, it's really going to make a, a much bigger difference uh, uh, later to, to uh, have things that, again, feel, feel a little bit more out of focus the further back you go. Okay, that's about it for the over narration. Looks like my uh, regular stuff's coming back. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'll hear, hear you, you'll hear me there. <laughs> okay, so at this point in this tutorial, uh, the narration is ending because I just realized I didn't turn my mic on until just now. So, uh, picking up here, I'm dropping a little bit of just this dark area right on the edge. What I, that's what I get for taking a lunch break in between recording these. Okay. I think that's all of them. Nope, missed a couple. Alright. Same thing we just did, but this time with... Uh, light color, so I'll need some white. I'm gonna grab regular titanium white to start out. The zinc white we won't need until we're doing the the, the next stage with the, the particle dust. Same middle color as the base. Add some white. Light's coming down from this angle. Kind of lightly tapping on the one corner where that light would be coming from. Don't have to be accurate, just have to be, you know, close. Most of this is going to get, uh, and like any detail I put in would kind of get covered up anyway, so doesn't make sense to really kind of go overboard with it. And I've actually got my uh, older piece on display across the room here. Uh, otherwise, I would say uh, having a sketch of where you want all of these shapes before you get started is ideal. Uh, I'm not really... Uh, it might kind of seem like I'm making this up as I go, um, and I am to some degree, 
with the general placement of, of these objects, but um, in terms of not being real specific on where I exactly where I want them, so much as the idea of uh, a general placement of not above a certain line here. All right. So those are going to need a, a, about a minute to dry. Not super long, but enough that I'm not afraid about ripping that, that paint off. So as that's happening, um, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a nice misty color for our particle effect. So we still have the blue on, on the, the palette, but I'm going to add a bit of the zinc white. Adding that blue to the white to offset the color a little. I'm going to grab a little bit of that gray, but not a ton. Just enough to tone that down so it's a little less saturated. Grab just a hint more of the blue. So we're looking for just a slightly kind of off-white color. Now you can use glazing liquid for this, but I do find that just using water works usually just fine. Um, but I am going to need an actual line to kind of look at where I'm painting here. So for this, um, I'm actually just going to probably just use a ruler. Uh, it's pretty much the easiest thing I can think of to grab without getting any kind of t anything out. Like don't, don't necessarily want to do any kind of taping or anything like this, especially not with the paint still being a little wet underneath. So I'm just going to lay this ruler down nice and flat right about where I want that line. And then I take that larger brush that I mentioned earlier, the, the, the big soft one, and we'll use that to grab some water and thin out our paint. And from here, just a washy layer all the way across, and maybe even a little thinner. Using that ruler to be sure we're not going too far. Like I might be dragging a little, little of that paint around, but not a ton. I'm going to lift that off. Now I do have a little bit of a bleed line here, but that's totally fine. We can just eyeball that. And I get my edges the way I always do. About like that. And we're not, again, this didn't add a ton of color here. Just enough to distinguish it from the rest of the, uh, the rest of the sky here. You can add a little bit more color in areas if you see fit. A little more haze and mist, maybe even towards the foreground more. Where that color might pop out a bit naturally. That's really all there is to it. Now from here, you can start adding uh, larger and larger shapes. But for this, I'm going to go ahead and rinse that brush out. We can go back into our gray. And just start dropping in bigger shapes, really. So let's say I want to, let's see, I want to put a bigger one maybe here. And don't worry about overlapping the ones you've already painted because you're going to, and in a lot of ways you should. You, uh, nothing should really seem separate. You, you, wanna, you want those overlapping shapes. Thin, thin one in here somewhere. Loop. Nice 
big one up there. It's kind of why I like using a flat brush for these big rocks and asteroids, because it, it does end up fe seeming a bit more like a, a natural rock, being a little more angular. And you don't really have, it, it, it's just easier that way, using the shape of the brush to do the work for you. Put some smaller ones in there too. Couple on my edges. Like so, there we have another layer of them. In exactly the same way we just did with uh, the light and dark uh, initially. Same thing here, grab some black, mix it with that color, black and blue and that, and then white back in over top of it. Black, blue, a little of that color. I can afford to, at this point, because my paint's getting to be a little thick, probably gonna actually lean a little bit more towards the blue as well. And uh, drop in those highlights and shadows. Let's see, where am I at? <laughs> Once again, I've got, uh, I've got glare at my angle, but you guys have uh, at most very little. So I, I'm actually having to move my whole head to, uh, down at an angle just to be able to see what I'm doing. As long as it looks good for you guys, that's all that matters. Now, ideally, if I was working on a much larger scale, I would not be doing this like wet paint into wet paint. I'd more than likely be letting these layers dry. But because this is just a nice quick and easy demo and on a lot smaller of a scale, I'm going to be thinning the paint more than I might otherwise do. And I imagine if you're doing this yourself, you're probably not working uh, anywhere near to the speed that I am. In fact, I would say don't. Don't don't rush don't rush through it. Take your time. Enjoy the process. That one's there. That is here. Now, similar to other parts of this tutorial series, uh, towards the end of this, I will grab the liner brush and do some additional detailing to these rocks, but for the time being, I'm just blocking in that color. Pretty solid for that layer, I believe. Now we do want to highlight those, but I'll give it a minute here. And as we're here, I can talk a little bit about uh, lighting in terms of foreground, middle ground, and background. Now in the original piece, I'll put that back up again on screen. Uh, in the original piece, I kept my foreground elements much, much uh, darker. Uh, the way I was playing with lighting in that one, I imagined that uh, I was in a in a darker area of, of the ring system, 
perhaps where the sunlight is not hitting uh, in, in that original piece. So for this particular one, I actually want to offset that a little bit rather than going darker and darker from a lighter and lighter area of rocks. Uh, so for this layer, again, same as before, but I want to push the contrast a little bit more here. So white, some of that gray. And with what little I can dry brush, I'm going to. Again, my paint's still pretty wet right now, so I might not be able to do it as much as I'd like to. But uh, I will certainly try here. On, and as it's been, um, if you guys watched the original part one of this um, series where we did the nebula, very little paint on the brush, just dry brushing technique. Let the, the texture of the canvas and let the light sort of drag Mo dragging motions you're doing with the brush do all the work. You don't have to sit there and detail everything. I mean, it's helped. it helps later on, but let the dry brush and the texture of the canvas do all the work for you. And also, in this case, the texture of the underlying paint with the planet that I had painted earlier. Think about your angles when you're when you're dropping that that uh, highlight in. Where's the light going to catch? If we, if we took one of these rocks and sh hit it, hit it with a flashlight, it's only going to be sort of that upper edge. You have to yeah, get a little bit of water here since this one was still kind of wet. Thin paint will stick to to, to thicker paint. If you're having problems and it's uh, you don't want to sit there and wait for it to dry, then just add a little bit of water. And less is more when it comes to dropping in these shapes. So I can sit there and, you know, try and make it perfect, but, you know, a couple blobs of paint will get you there. too much paint on the brush now here. Catching the edge of my hand there a bit. All right. One more layer, and I think we should be good. So, way more of the black this time. Despite the fact that I'm not keeping that up, my, my fore, foreground most layer dark, I still want to uh, have the illusion that I'm going to, and then we'll put in that little bit of highlight layer later. So basically, I'm starting with the the shadow layer this time, rather than going midtone then shadow then highlight, starting kind of with the shadow layer. I'll put a nice big one in this corner, primarily to hide my signature in it later. <laughs> Let's see, we'll put a real big one right in, eh, one bigger one here. I'm actually letting the paint be a little thicker here. This is a nice glob on that side, but 
honestly ten tends to end up being a little more interesting that way. One, or one up its way. There, one here. And maybe a sideways one in this corner. I feel like that's pretty good. I'm, I'm not going to worry about the edges for this one. So again, rather than going into the dark, since we already made our dark, I'll go with, with that middle gray as my mid-tone. <clears throat> and since we do them as two upper layer highlights. You can play around a little bit more with your shapes and, and detailing on the foreground, and you should. Anything that's closer to you, unless you're playing with lighting, uh, should be more detailed than the stuff in the background. This way with it. Missed one. <laughs> okay. And of course, that upper layer highlight. Just gonna use any residual paint on the on my brush from before to, to darken the white, but I mostly just wanna stick with the pure white here. Gonna hold my brush a little bit different here, coming at the layout method for traditional pencil work. So I want to be able to drag and move that brush a little more free form here. Let it kind of skip a little bit on the canvas. Kind of like what you might do with a knife, and you can absolutely do like Bob Ross technique with the knife here, but I just find brushes to be a little bit more versatile. About like that. I'm actually not super happy with this upper one. I'm just gonna do that a couple times. Rework some darks into that actually. I'm working I'm working too fast, that's the problem. I can always come back in and redetail that later, but for the time being, that's a pretty simple and easy way to painting a little asteroid field. Um, asteroid field, ring system, what have you. Um, pretty simple here. Mid-tone, shadow, highlight, little bit of uh, frosting layer in between. Now if you want, you can do another frosting layer on top of that and just kind of just keep building those layers more and more. I would advise doing so really extensively because uh, at, some, at a certain point, piece can end up looking a little bit too busy. But I think uh, for this particular technique and this particular tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Uh, this is the last main sequence video in all of these uh, lessons. Again, if you missed any of the earlier ones and want to know what we've did already, uh, I did a small square where we did uh, nebula as well as uh, these planetary craters. I also spent some time uh, doing planets uh, in the previous tutorial. So all of these interesting different planet types, uh, the larger outer section with the painting a ring from a distance, as well as all of those shadows areas like that. Uh, that was in the, the previous tutorial in this series. All of these tutorials can be found in the uh, planetary object, I'm not sure what I'm calling it yet, but uh, the acrylic uh, tutorial playlist for uh, all of these videos. Link is in the description box below if you've missed any of them. Uh, to finish up this series though, at some point, I don't know when, sometime in the future, it's not going to be 
any time in the, uh, this, this set that I've recorded all of these um, today, but I do want to do a much larger piece where we combine and mix and match all these different techniques together in a much more complete piece. And I also want to take you along the journey of building that composition from the ground up, from the first sketch to the final brush stroke. So look forward to that in the future, possibly as a live show. I, again, haven't quite decided yet, but let me know your thoughts and comments below uh, for what you might want to see me do for a much larger piece uh, and to uh, demo this whole idea of space objects. So again, if you learned anything or enjoyed this, I hope you guys hit the like button. Uh, get subscribed if you're not already. Uh, I will see you eventually in the next tutorial. But for the, as far as this series goes, thanks for painting with me. Thanks for learning with me. Keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time.